And sometimes they can go back and renegotiate. I've even gotten on the phone with other people's sellers to negotiate that down and still get the deal where they still can get their fee. And you know what I'm saying? Still make the deal work. So, you know, a lot of times we assume, oh, a wholesaler going to bring us something that's no good. And we just kind of discard it. But sometimes they do need your help to move them along. They could be a little newer. If you have some skill set to help them move that deal along where you can actually buy that deal, actually JV that deal, actually make that deal a deal. Because they got a person on the hook. I mean, just like Bree here, she got a fish on the hook. We don't know where it's going to go. But once you got a fish on the hook, now we go to work. If we don't got a fish on the hook, what are we doing? We just, you know, praying that one day I'm going to get a deal. No, you <laughs> need a fish on the hook. Am I talking right here, Bree, or what? Am I, am I yeah, right? I got it. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Fish on really the hook. Is. I'm going to put on my vision board. Fish on the hook. You got them on there. Now you got to put them in there. <laughs> You know, so that's where it all starts. I mean, we don't know where these things are going to go. I don't even know if this guy, he can be unrealistic. You know, these sellers can be complex. Some are easy going. Like, wow, did I do something wrong? That seemed too easy. You never know. So every case is different. So I just deal with the person I'm dealing with. What they say, love the one you with. You know, regardless of the other sellers that cussed you out or, hey, I can't believe you gave me that offer or whatever they did in the past. Can't think about that. This is a new person, a new date. Go out and have a good time. So I'm curious, when you come across deals, do you offer um, a cash offer always first? No, not necessarily. Depends on the deal. I'll give them a multiple offer email. So we have a little template that's already been made up as a cash offer, a creative offer, and then like um, we'll say something like we can list it for you or something like that to make it appear that you got multiple options which they still do have multiple options but most of the time when I spoke to them they would find out or they would say oh I don't want to list with a realtor or I don't want to do this I need to sell quick or whatever their problem is we try to tailor our offer to what they're asking for that's why it's so important to find out what their problems are and offer them a solution to the problems they're bringing not what I want to offer them. Oh, I want it to be a wholesale deal. It may not be a wholesale deal. Oh, I want it to be a subject to deal. It may not be a subject to deal. We don't know that until we talk to the person. And I'm just looking at the notes on this. That doesn't mean any of that means anything. He may say, hell no, I ain't leaving that loan in my name. But then again, he might say, hey, I need out of this house. I don't want that auction to happen to be on my record for X number of years. Right. I guess. So I just try to, you know, ask the right questions, listen to what these sellers are saying and give them exactly what they're asking for or something close to it. Just like your case, Bree, you're gonna give them something close to it. You may not give them exactly what they want, but you will solve their problem pretty easily. You know, it's a headache. It's a lot of stress, it's a lot of pain points. If we can address them all and knock them all down, we get houses. That's how we make money. That's how we get property, solving problems for people. All right, any other questions? Or I'm gonna call this guy up. You come on with the call. I'm stoked. Let, let's see if he cooking with hot fish grease or just talking smack. She didn't really give me any information, really. So I almost, well, I mean, I got some information, but nothing really uh, like monthly payment. It says he owes 270 and he wants to sell for 270. So that's why I'm thinking he's willing to sell it for what he owes on it. But we'll clarify all of that anyway when I speak to this guy. If he doesn't say, what are you doing calling me so late for? Where's 561 area code? Is that up there? No, that's not that area. I don't know where that's at. How do I leave? Somewhere out of state, maybe. Monroe. Monroe. Let's call Mike. What up, Mike? It's your man, Chris Monroe. How you doing? Nah, he'd be like, wow, he's excited for a sad time. All right, so let me get him on the phone and see if he's home. You may have heard the saying, the fortunes are in the follow-up. Now there's a brand new system that is great to help you cold call, text message, drop voicemails, and so much more all automated. You don't have to remember anything. Just set it and forget it. All you have to do is speak to people. Check it out. WokeReply.com. It's a multi-touch marketing campaign where you can schedule to send text, voicemail, email, and even live calls all on autopilot. Check it out today. WokeReply.com. That's WokeReply.com. Hello? Hey, Michael, this is Chris. You had spoke to my assistant earlier in regards to your house. How are you? 
I'm sorry, what was that? You said I wasn't in your area, so it's, uh, I don't know what else to talk about. Oh, I don't know who, was that my assistant or somebody else said it? I was late and you told me, uh, that um, I was out of the area for, uh, purchasing the home and uh, doing a, uh, a rent back. Oh, you want to do a rent back? Yeah, so I... Yeah, we, we, outright, so we do buy so we do buy in Moscow Mills that's where you're at correct yes okay so no problem we do buy over there now tell me more about this uh, rent back thing what do you mean by that uh, they park the house and the room back until I leave and pay rent until I leave oh okay so you don't have a place to, uh, have, have you buy the house out there for at least What's on on the loan is uh, seventy thousand, hundred seventy thousand. Plus, I got ten thousand dollars equity in it. So, okay. So when I purchased it, I bought two hundred eighty thousand. So, have you identified a place to move to already? Not yet, no. Oh, okay. And then, so um, let's see. You have an auction date. When is the auction date for this? I don't know. We're still dealing with them right now. Okay, have you been in contact with your lender or the bank already? The lender, yes. What did they say it's gonna to take to bring your loan current? Like, what is it in arrears? 270,000. To bring it current would be, you think, 50,000. So you're 15,000 behind with their fees and uh, things like that? Yeah. Okay, and then, um, let's see here. And what is the monthly payment on it that's on there right now? So that includes your taxes and insurance? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, because I'm just trying to gather some information so I can see, you know, because we may have multiple different ways we may, may be able to help you. I'm not sure yet. That's why I'm just trying to make sure that it's something um, we can actually help you solve a problem for. Um, what happened anyway? How did you uh, get behind? I got sick, and now I'm on Dallas for three times a week, and I don't know how long I got. So, yeah. Oh, wow, that's no good. Yeah. Well, anyway, I don't think you guys can help me, but when I get done dealing with them, uh, we'll see. Right, right. Yeah, so the biggest thing, I mean, you know, from what I'm hearing, is more so just making sure you are able to find a place to move to. Is that correct? Yes. And what are you looking for, like an apartment, to buy another house? What is your, uh, what are you looking for? Uh, if I sell the house, I won't have to worry about anything else other than the credit situation. I could get another house somewhere that's close by to everybody else. I'm on the boonies right here. Oh, okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Now, so you say you want to you're gonna rent another house or you're going to go buy another house and get a new loan and stuff? Hey, Chris, is that you? I get a new home? Yeah. If I have enough money, I can get from the uh, selling of this house. Like I said, uh, Zillow's got it uh, set for uh, 360 But Zillow has it for. I don't know how they came up with that price. Okay. Yeah, and Zillow sometimes, they just make numbers up, to be honest. I've seen them high sometimes. I've seen them low. So I really, you know, it just it just really, really varies. Especially if, you, if you're out in the boonies, they're really not that accurate. They're more accurate in the cities, in my opinion. This, the uh, Troy sent me a letter stating that uh, my property was on value one of thirty six thousand dollars. So, oh wow! So whatever, yeah. So whatever the. Uh, yeah. So you owe two hundred and seventy thousand, correct? Right. And you want to sell it for two hundred seventy thousand? That's what I see on here. Is that right? I'm gonna sell it more next because I got equity in the house. Okay, what were you looking to sell, sell it for? That satisfies the loan. And whatever my equity is, I think it's like fifteen thousand in equity. Uh, so I are you that to, to help replace? So are you saying at closing you want to have about fifteen thousand in your pocket at closing when everything's said and done? Yes. Okay. Well, that's not unreasonable, I don't think. Um, let's see here. And then you say it's an auction. What uh, lender is that with? Um, well, I got sold. Uh, 
um, what's the federal loan or uh, FBA? FBA loan. Who like who is the bank that you pay every uh, month? Is it like uh, Wells Fargo, Mr. Cooper, like one of those or? And why do you want to know that first of all? Well, because step one for us to do anything, we're gonna have to stop the auction. Because I just looked, it says your auction is December 14th. So we need to, first of all, stop the auction so that we can buy the house. Said September 14th. No, December 14th is what I just saw online here. So that's, that's not right. So about, right. about three weeks. Well, they're going to uh, contact me. Uh, I just needed to give them some paperwork, and I gave that to them. So they're going to review and then give me with me again. I'm sorry. So you're saying somebody else is working on your your deal here? Is that what you're saying? Somebody else is trying to buy it? They are. Oh, okay. So you are you so you did you do a purchase contract with them already? Yeah, so that's with somebody else. So, so, so you're working with someone else on it, but they haven't put a purchase contract on it. We actually want to buy it. So I don't, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. You know, you say they're trying to work something out. We're actually looking to buy the property, um, put some money in your pocket, help you move on to where you want to go to. Yeah, you'll have to give me. Uh... And who is they? Okay. The loan company. The loan company. Okay, so who is that loan company? I didn't get their name. I'm sorry. I don't know when they get done. I'll tell you later when they get done doing this. I don't want to. Uh, I don't trust you right now. <laughs> oh yeah, no problem. I don't know who you really yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, not not an issue. And I and I'm gonna send you my information as well after we get the off of this phone call, so you can do any research or anything you want to do. Um, what we do most of the time in these deals is. Um, we either buy it outright if the numbers make sense, or sometimes we're able to do something more creative where we're able to um, catch up the arrears, continue making those payments, and put money in your pocket at closing so that you can move on to something bigger and better and be done with that house. So every case is different. All right, well, right now, the house is a, a new build. It's brand new. Three, three years old. I had it built it. One guy told me uh, what they were going to offer me would be less than uh, what it was owed. I said, no, that's not going to happen. So So you've been getting offers already. I ain't got no loss. That's what they say. No, I said they've been giving you an offer. Yeah, people have been giving you an offer on the phone. He said it would be below what they, uh, the 270. Yeah, that wouldn't help you out. Yeah, that. Yeah, that probably would not help you out at all. Find more leads than you can even process. That's multiple listing service. That's the MLS for you real estate agents. Absentee owner information. Find the cash buyers and flippers in any market nationwide. Pull a pre-foreclosure list. And don't forget, you got to find those comps. Get nationwide access with multiple filters. Powered by PropStream at WokeSource.com. Get your seven-day free trial today. WokeSource.com. That's WokeSource.com. So you've been getting offers already. I ain't got no loss. That's what they say. No, I said they've been giving you an offer. Yeah, people have been giving you an offer on the phone. He said it would be below what they, uh, the 270. Yeah, that wouldn't help you out. Yeah that, yeah, that probably would not help you out at all. So, um... I know, I would do it. I'd, I'd end up owing still. Yeah. No, no, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, you don't want to take less than what you owe on it, because then, you know... Well, there is a way to do that, too, but it just depends on the situation. That may not be the case with your house, because your house is in perfect condition, correct? Yes. Yeah. 
So here's what I can do, um, Michael. Like I said, my name is Chris with St. Louis Cash Buyers. I'm going to send you a, a text message with our company information. You can see who you're on the phone with, do any kind of research you want to do. Um, and what I would like to do is set up a time to maybe even see your house and uh, buy your house and get this wrapped up and get this behind you. Um, would that help you out, you think? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what they're going to do first, and then uh, after that, we'll go. So is the lender uh, trying to do a loan modification? Is that what they're working on? Yeah, that's what they're talking about doing, but I'm still gonna leave. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we've helped people do those as well. That's not a problem. It's just, like I say, every case is different. Um, but uh, did you send in the paperwork yeah. that they requested as far as like hardship letter? And yeah, they got all, yeah, all the paperwork. They got everything they got. So you already sent it in. So you've been doing good already. Yeah, I've been giving them everything they asked. I just got to uh, see what they're going to do. And like I said, I'm going to move out of here. Cause, like Everybody I know, uh, I moved out here because of my job at General Motors. And I got disabled. So I can't work there anymore. So, uh, so what I'm going to do here, Michael, is I'm going to uh, I'm going to run some comps to comparables, home sales on, on this house here, see what the nearby one sold for. And um, let's just say um, we we do our underwriting and we check out, you know, all the numbers and everything and say we're able to put maybe 10,000 in your pocket. Would something like that help you out at closing if you were able to walk away with 10K at closing? So if 10000 was in your pocket and you were able to sell the house, that would not help you? No, I'd be more than 10000 Like I said, the house, is, the house value has gone up. And I got the letter here saying, well, how much has gone up? 36000 So you so you, so so you told me earlier that you... Right, fifteen thousand. So if it was below that, it wouldn't be any good. It wouldn't help you out at all. Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move out with fifteen thousand. Yeah, closing costs. Was, I bought this. It was ten grand just for the closing costs. Yeah. So that's the other thing too. So if or when we buy your house, we typically cover the closing costs as well. So um, I'm saying that's in your pocket after all fees and everything. Yeah, but if I move the house, I get a new house. The closing costs I'm gonna pay again. See what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, so let me we'll see what's going on. So let me take a, a little bit here. I'm gonna run some numbers. Like I said, I'm gonna send you a text with my information so you can do your research, see who you're dealing with. Like I said, my name is Chris with St. Louis Cash Buyers. Um, did you have any other questions for me for now before I let you go? No, no more questions. All right, have a good evening. Hey, you too, folks. Bye bye. All right, what do you think, Bree? That was good. I love hearing those. He ain't talking about nothing. Talking about some goddamn rent back. Boy, I ain't renting you nothing. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's his way of not paying you too, huh? But you see how he tried to dodge my question and I still come back and ask my question no matter what he throw at me? Yes. I mean, I probably could have came a little better with who I was and all that stuff, but you know, usually these people are so motivated they don't really care who you are, but you know, I, was, I shouldn't have came in so hot like that. But other than that, what do you think about that call, Chris? Good job. I mean, I you like think it. it's something there, though? You think it's he workable, or is he just? Uh, I think it is. Yeah, fifteen k to walk, and I haven't, yeah, haven't he, even he broken down anything like subject two to him. I'm just having a conversation. See, I don't want to scare right. him away right out the gate. How do I put this X number of money in your pocket at closing and have you out of this house? That's what I'm selling him. I'm not selling him. Uh, purchase price. I'm selling them what he needs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, Bettina, what do you think? So let me get this straight. He just wanted the $15,000 equity out of that house to move, right? Plus you have to pay $15,000 in arrear and start taking over and paying the mortgage, right? Okay, so $30,000 would get him to move and get you the house, right? Probably about 33000 but yeah, okay, 34000 as, as it sits with that, that's without any other unknowns. 
And that's if we can't get them a loan modification to put those arrears on the back of the loan, because that's possible. Hey, you know what? I didn't think about that. I'm always thinking about that. I'll be seven steps ahead. And that's why I was like, what is he doing? He already doing a loan modification. Matter of fact, let me text him right quick, like I promised. We don't want to do say something we're going to do and not do it before I forget. <laughs> so he can be like, oh. He said, yeah, I don't know you. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> Good. That's not like he, he's already been on the phone with somebody. I thought he said somebody made him an offer already. Didn't it sound like he said that? It did. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I said it probably was a loan mod there. Yeah, let's see here. Um, is that this guy? Here, open call log. And what did you think about it, Ken? Yeah, I liked it. So uh, a question I had was when, you, when you're looking up online to find his auction date, where did you find that? It's right on Zillow, to be honest. <laughs> it's right on Zillow. You click a button and you click another button. It comes up December 14th, 1 p.m. Thursday, December 14th at 1 p.m. See, this That's stuff it. is public record. When you're dealing with auctions, pre foreclosures, it ain't no secrets for real. I mean, you do got to know what the loan balance is, their interest rate, all that type of stuff. But as far as like the auction date, everybody know that. Cool. So yeah, it's right there on Zillow. Let me see here. Oh, that's West Palm Beach. That's where that number is, that 561 number is. What are you doing in that's St. Right. Louis if you live in Palm Beach? What you doing here? Out in the boonies. He even said, I live in the boonies. He called your town the boonies, Chris. Yeah, no, we may not have uh, time to actually like watch you do uh, comps for this, but I'm curious if you've run into situations like this where they aren't kind of in the middle of nowhere and you don't have a whole lot to go off of in terms of good comps that are recent or close to the same size or close to your property um, there should be plenty of, there should be plenty around there yeah it, i mean those are new builds i mean three-year-old house what are we gonna do go up in value <laughs> as he claims you know people say things but oh it's no it's a perfect house been here three years you go there they got nine dogs you know what i mean they tore up every damn thing but you know i don't know trust but verify remember <laughs> yeah, it's the same. It's a deal thing from earlier. Let's see, send him that. He's got that text message now. So yeah, that's the biggest thing. You know, I'm just trying to fill him out. Is he want to play ball? He's my all. Let me find out. Oh, whatever my objection is, let's overcome it. And did you like how I anchored him a little bit? What if we do our numbers and we come back and say we can put ten thousand in your pocket? Would that help you out? No, I gotta have 15. So you see, he's already kind of a fucking asshole already. Excuse my French. You know what I mean? He already kind of like, not a penny less. Okay, yeah. you gonna lose your house to try to do that? Are you really yeah, I, play? I did like that because he was kind of, um, just kind of a little wishy-washy on what he wanted to do. And he's saying, oh, this is what Zillow says. And just kind of talking around the issue but if you say hey if i just gave you this amount of money and he seemed like he's open to that so i like how you kind of pinned it down to like hey this was the terms is that something that would work for you and it's a good way to like just close it down to uh, making the deal happen because you can't rely on him to do it he doesn't seem like he knows exactly what he wants and the other thing I want everybody to take away from this call and any call I do is I'm not afraid to ask the question. This question has to be asked. I know it hurts and it's painful. How much you owe? I don't want to ask how much they owe. They go, oh, might say something wrong. I don't want to ask them what's this and what's their arrears. Hey man, you want help? I'm here to help. If not, no harm, no foul. I mean, you know, I'm not going to kiss no butt of any of these sellers. You know, I'm really here to help you. I'm not trying to hurt them or nothing, but this is what the game is. You, I mean, I know it, I couldn't help that he got sick and he's on dialysis and all of that, but you know, that is something, you know, some people will probably even play more into that and say, oh, well, my uncle was on that, da, 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 and tell a story and really build rapport. But I'm more of a direct close type person, so I don't really get, I don't get too deep in the weeds on that stuff. I do give them the, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But let me ask you this, get back to the script, baby. Now, if we were in person or something, it may be a little bit different. Um, 
but typically on the phone, especially with stuff like this that's short notice, you don't have time to waste. This is a foreclosure. This isn't like, I want to sell. You need to sell, my man. This ain't no want. This is a need. I'm here to give you what you need, not what you want. So, yeah. Any other questions about that? Or I could run these numbers real quick.